Ukrainian President Rodmir Zelensky has wrapped up his Europe tour. He visited four countries, which include Britain, Germany, France and Italy. Zelensky's diplomatic tour comes ahead of Kiev's much-expected counter-offensive. The latest stop in his European tour was the United Kingdom, the last stop, where he met with the UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. During the meet, the Ukrainian president said that he was hopeful of securing a quick deal to get fighter jets from the Western partners. London has confirmed that it will send hundreds of air defense missiles and armed drones to Ukraine after it provided Kiev with storm shadow cruise missiles last week. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak reaffirmed this while speaking at the Chequers Garden. But I think it's important for the Kremlin to also know that we're not going away. Right? We are here for the long term. We remain steadfast in wanting to defend Ukraine, not just now to reclaim its rightful territory, but also to ensure that Ukraine has the means to defend itself into the future as well. Uh, and that's another topic of conversation that we've had today is about the security arrangements that we should put in place amongst allied countries for Ukraine for the long term to ensure that it can uh, defend itself and provide effective deterrence against future Russian aggression. In response, the Kremlin has said that the new British weapons due to be supplied to Kiev will only cause further destruction. Before meeting Sunak, Zelensky had stopped in France where he held a working dinner with the French President Emmanuel Macron. Speaking during a televised interview with a French broadcaster, Macron said that he had opened the door to train Ukrainian pilots, adding that training on French planes such as the Mirage 2000 could start now. France has agreed to provide dozens more light tanks and armored vehicles for Ukraine's army as well. Macron has clearly emphasized on how Paris would focus its efforts in supporting Ukraine's air defense capacities in order to defend its population against the Russian strikes. La deuxième chose, c'est donc qu'on ne retourne mais qu'on ne fasse pas la guerre à la Russie. On ne fait pas la guerre à la Russie. On aide l'Ukraine à résister face à la sanction russe. Ce qui veut dire qu'on ne livre pas d'armes qui permettraient d'atteindre le sol russe ou d'attaquer la Russie. Now, day before landing in Paris, Zelensky also held a meeting with German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who has offered Zelensky $3 billion in a new military package. It includes advanced German Leopard tanks and anti-aircraft systems to defend Ukraine. Now, he also stopped over in Italy, where he held talks with Italian officials and also Pope Francis, while he thanked Italy for all its support during the war. He urged the Pope to back Kiev's 10-point peace plan. Let's now tell you more about Zelensky's Europe tour. Now, first, he stopped in Italy, where he met uh, Pope Francis and also the Italian officials. He met Pope at the Vatican City. Now, after Italy, he traveled to Germany, where he met Olaf Scholz. After that, uh, the third stopover of Zelensky was France, where he met with the French President Emmanuel Macron. And lastly, he visited London, where he met UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Apart from this, let's also now tell you about uh, Zelensky's diplomatic Europe outreach. Now, first, Zelensky was in Italy. He met Pope Francis there, and he also urged Pope to back Kiev's 10-point peace plan. After that, he also, Italy has so far backed uh, Ukraine in the ongoing war. Now, after meeting Pope Francis in Italy, Zelensky then traveled to Germany, where he met uh, Olaf, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. After that, he also, uh, Berlin has now offered Kiev $3 billion in new military package. Now, the package includes tanks, anti-aircraft systems and ammunition and also German Leopard tanks. And lastly, uh, the Ukrainian tank crews will also start training on 31 U.S. Abrams tanks. Now, apart from visiting these two countries, Zelensky then visited France, where he met French President Emmanuel Macron. And France has agreed to train uh, Ukrainian fighter jets. Macron has also agreed to send Kiev more, more tanks. But it is also important to note here that uh, Macron has clearly said that France will not be providing any fighter jets to Kiev. Macron will also support Ukraine's air defense capabilities. And lastly, uh, Zelensky visited Britain, 
he met UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak there and uh, he he clearly said that UK has pledged to train Ukrainian fighter pilots however he's also said that uh, UK just last week also supplied Kiev with storm shadow missiles and for more on this uh, we're now being joined by uh, Colonel Glenn he's joining us live from uh, Kiev Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, Colonel. Yeah, morning. Right now, um, Zelensky has completed the European tour. United Kingdom has promised attack drones and missiles for Ukraine. And a week uh, before that, uh, UK supplied Kiev with stormy drones. Uh, help us understand as to how these game-changer missiles will help Ukraine in its counter-offensive. Uh, well, firstly, can I say what uh, what a, an excellent summary you've just given? Uh, I mean, you've stolen my thunder with most things. But the, yes, the, the, the storm shadow basically has got a, a long, much longer range, out, out to about 400 kilometers. Um, and this means that, that, that there, there are whole uh, areas of the, of the rear area of the Russian um, invasion that, that are now in range. Uh, for example, with luck, um, they could also reach uh, Ukraine could also reach the Kirsch Bridge, um, but but it's more importantly it means that that they can start attacking some of the closer airfields, ammunition sites, and command posts, and uh, and this this will make it much much harder for Russia to to maintain a defence if the if the counterattack starts. Right, Colonel. Now, just uh, yesterday, a top Ukrainian commander said that Kiev uh, has pushed back Russian troops from various areas in Ukraine. Do you think that Kiev's counteroffensive has already begun? No, no, I don't. Because looking at it um, and looking at the maps uh, just now, the, 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 most of the areas where the, the fighting and where the pushback has been, um, they're still using the same troops that have been there for the last month or so. And those are not the troops that have been prepared for the counterattack. And you're right, there has been pushback around Bakhmut. Um, the, 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 the troops have actually pushed around the sides of Bakhmut, the Ukrainians, up to a depth of two kilometres. But, but Russia is not stopping its attack on Bakhmut. And, and I've, I've just heard that they're bringing um, uh, some parachute forces to reinforce the, the attack there. So I think that the front line is more uh, opportunistic attacks where Russia seems to be weak and that the local forces are trying to move forward and, and are doing so in all sorts of areas, including towards Donetsk airport. Right, Colonel. Also, while Zelensky is uh, garnering military support, he visited uh, four major European countries. The ongoing situation is something else. Um, in the latest, uh, the Russians have attacked. They've, give, they've sent out air raid attacks uh, throughout Ukraine. So what is actually happening on ground? And do you think Bakhmut has become an area of claims and counterclaims? Um, <clears throat> No, I think back, Bakhmut is as as it says because you can actually see quite clearly the um, the, the battlefield from from air surveillance by uh, from satellite surveillance by the, where the heat the heat is of the battle. So the, the, the and and Prigozhin in Bakhmut has actually said around Bakhmut has actually said that his troops are withdrawing in places. So I think that that's pretty much clear. What what's happening in the, in the big picture is is that Russia is still. Uh, where it's struggling on the front line in places, it's still throwing as many missiles and drones as it can uh, into into Ukraine with the aim of creating damage. Um, last night was very heavy attack on on Kiev, and there were uh, three or four injured, and and some destruction not from the drones themselves, uh, missiles themselves, but actually from the debris uh, after the um, after the missiles were hit. So the debris fell on several of the major uh, major residential areas in in Kiev, but but I think that the Russian aim at the moment is to is still to try and bring Kiev to the uh, to to the table so that they can they can hold the gains that they've got because it's it's well known now from people talking on the other side uh, that, um, that that the Russians are extremely scared and are taking a, a lot of defence precautions even. Uh, senior officials moving out of places like Luhansk, Melitopol, and, and heading towards uh, safety. Right, Colonel. Thank you so much for joining us and beyond and sharing your insights with us. We'll, of course, have to wait and see when and how Ukraine's counteroffensive starts. <laughs> we will. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Colonel.